Today, we're gonna to be looking at pop-pop boats. Now, I've explored these in previous videos, but today's video is gonna be a little different. We're gonna be looking at making a pop-pop boat out of a pop can. But for now, I'm just gonna give everybody a quick intro to what a pop-pop boat is, because I'm sure a lot of you have never heard of these before. What I have here is a little tin boat with a boiler and two tubes that lead from the boiler out to the back of the boat. And how this works is you fill the tubes and the boiler completely up with water, you put a little heat source like a candle underneath the boiler. This candle heats the water up in the boiler until the water gets hot enough to flash into a vapor state. And vapor, vapor takes up much more room than water. So when some of the water flashes into vapor, it creates a lot of pressure in this boiler, which forces some of the water out of the boiler and out of these tubes, propelling the boat forwards. And then what happens is the momentum of the water flowing through these tubes wants to keep on going even when the pressure in the boiler has been relieved. So it actually pulls a bit of a negative pressure into the boiler. In other words, it creates like a bit of a vacuum in the boiler, I guess. And then this vacuum eventually slows the water down and pulls fresh water back into the boiler. This fresh water contacts a hot boiler surface and the whole process repeats itself. And this rapid change in pressure in the boiler creates that pop noise that you hear when the boat operates. If you look at this a boat in water here, Let's zoom out a bit. I can give you a little demonstration. If I remove the front of this boat, you'll see the boiler. I won't take it completely, I will take it completely off. And I've got my little candle right there. I've already primed the boiler, so it's all full of water. I'll light the candle. There we go. Just tuck that under the boiler. I'm gonna put the lid back on just to prevent the wind from affecting the whole process. And I can already feel it starting. There it is. So that might actually be pretty loud because I find microphones really pick up this noise with a lot of um, effectiveness. But that's basically what a pop-pop boat is. And of course, as soon as you extinguish the flame, the boat stops. With that intro out of the way, it's time to start making our pop-pop boat boiler out of our pop can. Now, I've been playing around with these designs on and off over the past three or four years. I've tried different manufacturing methods, I've tried soldering, I've tried gluing, I've tried different types of glue, I've tried different boiler shapes, and I finally settled upon something that I'm pretty proud of, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. First thing you're going to do, take a can of pop or beer, open it up, and drink it. This aluminum can, along with some small copper tubing and 5 minute epoxy, will become the boiler of our boat. We're going to start by cutting off the bottom of the can and then also cutting out a small square from the side of the can. Using some tin snips, I'm gonna cut out the little concave bowl from the bottom of the can, leaving that eighth inch lip along the edge. Next, we can trace out that bowl on top of our aluminum sheet and cut it out about an eighth inch inside the mark we just made. This should give us a bowl with a cover that fits down inside that lip. Now we're gonna make three evenly spaced creases in that cover and then flip it over and make three evenly spaced creases inside the creases you just made. So you should have six alternating creases all together. This pulls the circumference of the cover together and lets it pop back and forth like a bottle cap. It just makes the boat sound really good. Now we're going to drill two eighth inch holes in our bowl, positioned about three eighths of an inch off the perimeter as shown here. I forgot to charge the drill for this clip so I ended up uh, chewing through these holes by hand which actually worked alright. Using some coarse grit sandpaper, we're going to scuff up all the areas that are about to be epoxied. This just helps the epoxy sort of bite into the surface a little better. The last thing we're going to do to this piece is make about 30 evenly spaced cuts along that outer lip, and you'll see how these are used in just a minute. The copper tubing I'm using for the legs of my boiler has an eighth inch inner diameter and an outer diameter of 0.16-ish. You should be able to bend this tubing into an L shape by hand. I'll throw a template in the description so you can copy what I've done if you want. And then I'm going to use some sandpaper to clean up the end of this tube as well as scuff up the area that's about to be glued. There's a completed L section. Now I'm going to take a couple decks of cards and some tape and tape those tubes on top of the cards to form a little gluing jig. I'm also going to take some paper and roll it up to form some little plugs that I can stuff on the ends of the tubes. This will just help me align the boiler legs with the boiler bowl we made earlier. Now we're going to mix up some 5 minute epoxy 
and apply a liberal amount to the intersection between the legs and the bowl. Make sure you remove the plugs before they become permanently glued in place. After a couple hours, we should be ready to glue the boiler lid in place, so mix up some more 5 minute epoxy, and then quickly apply it to the perimeter of the joint, and then one by one we're going to fold in those tabs we cut out earlier. Once the epoxy cures, you're going to have a nearly indestructible boiler. I found that on other boiler designs, once the epoxy ages, it starts to crack and fail. But in this boiler, even when the epoxy starts to crack, these tabs ensure that the boiler remains airtight. This boiler here is still fully functional, even though it looks like the glue has completely failed. Using a hole saw, a jigsaw, a file, a chop saw, and a palm sander, I'm going to fabricate a quick little boat body that I can glue my boiler to, and something that will hold a tea candle underneath the boiler. Again, I'll throw a quick little template in the description of this video if you want to replicate what I've done here, or you can shoot for something a little more elegant. The first thing you're going to want to do to test out your boat is prime the boiler, which means you're going to fill it up with water as much as you can using a sink or a sprayer attachment, and then place it in a bowl of water and see how well it floats. Mine did not float too well. I'm going to solve this quickly by gluing some closed cell foam to the bottom of this boat, and we should be back on our way. It sort of works. Come on. There we go. So, although this boat is working, it's a little bit rough and doesn't cut along as well as I hoped it would. One similarity between both of these boats that I purchased off eBay is that the boilers seem to be angled a little bit so that the part of the boiler right above the candle is higher than the rest of the boiler. I'm thinking the reason for this might be so that when the steam forms up here, gravity pushes the light steam to the top of the boiler, which in turn allows the steam to push the water out of the boiler and through the tubes. If the boiler is completely flat and steam formed right there, Gravity doesn't care where the steam goes. For all we know, the steam might be making its way to the legs of the boiler and out the tubes before it actually pushes the water out of the boiler. I'm gonna take my boiler out of my boat, modify it to match these boilers' angles, and put it back in the water and see how it works. Even though this change was super subtle, it did seem to give me a pop-pop boat that putted along much more consistently. Oh yeah, that sounds a little more like a pop-pop boat. It looks like this boat works pretty well. So I've moved out to a larger pond so that we get a better feel for this boat. I found the most challenging thing to be the wind. The slightest breeze blows the candle away from the boiler and prevents the boat from working. Oh, look at that. Of course, as soon as the wind starts to blow the flame out, it stops working. But I did manage to get it to work in a few instances when the wind settled down. So I'm pretty happy with how this little boat worked. My only complaint would be the candle and the fact that there's nothing shielding the candle from any kind of breeze. And as I found out during my little testing uh, montage there, whenever this boat leaves like a covered area, the slightest breeze is enough to just blow the candle away from the boiler and prevent it from working. So I think in the next revision, I want to put some kind of a windscreen on top of this thing to like shield the candle from the wind. Speak of the wind, as you can hear, it's like very windy out here. I've got my uh, little fuzzy hat on my microphone so hopefully that's doing something but that kind of brings me to the next part of this video which is what do I have planned for the future well I plan to sort of forget about this guy and let's see if this works there it is this is the radio controlled twin engine pop pop boat as the name suggests it is fully radio controlled I don't have the transmitter right now but there's a little receiver battery pack a voltage regulator and a servo motor that just control this rudder in a simple back forth motion and that's all that is radio controlled. This boat is powered by two separate pop pop boat engines very similar to the one we made in this video. 
Now I'm going to be interested to see if I have any issues getting them to run at the same time because it can be a little bit finicky. I bent up some screen door mesh to form a little hut and that just covers up our candle and boiler and my hope is that this will sort of eliminate any sort of effects that a bit of a breeze might have on uh, the candle flame. So we'll see how it works. Um, speaking of that, I hope to test it out this weekend so you might see another video within a couple weeks. But then again, I hadn't posted a video for four years before this current video, so you never know. But hopefully I can get something out relatively soon.